Hi there, John McAdams coming to you from the range out here in East Texas. Thank you so much for joining me in this video where I test out how the 6.5 Creedmoor performs in a shorter barreled rifle. Now there's a lot to like about a short barreled rifle. They are lightweight, they're compact, they're easy to maneuver, especially in tight conditions. But the downside of a shorter barreled rifle like this is you do take a hit to your muzzle velocity. Now the question is, how big of a hit are you taking to your muzzle velocity by going to a short barrel like this? And how much of a difference does that make downrange? That's what we're gonna test out in this video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot a couple different types of 6.5 Creedmoor factory ammo in two different rifles. First one is this Bergara MG Micro Light Rifle, 18 inch long barrel. I will compare muzzle velocities obtained with that rifle to those I obtain out of this rifle, which is a Bergara Wilderness Terrain, has a 24 inch long barrel. I'll shoot three different factory loads in this video. First, Hornady Precision Hunter, 143 grain ELDX. Second, Federal Terminal Ascent, 130 grain Terminal Ascent Bullet. Last one, Barnes Vortex Long Range, 127 grain LRX Bullet. So I'll shoot five shots from each one of those factory loads in each rifle, measure velocities with my Garmin chronograph. Then I'll come back, run the numbers, and we'll see what sort of a difference in muzzle velocity we get with this factory ammo in each rifle. And then we'll also see what sort of a difference it makes downrange in terms of trajectory, wind deflection, retained velocity, and retained kinetic energy. So let's get shooting. Okay, here are the results. As you can see, the rifle with the 24-inch long barrel delivered velocities very close to advertised. The Barnes and Federal loads were a little faster than advertised. The Hornady ammo was a little, but not excessively slow. The results were very similar for each type of ammunition, and I observed an average loss of about 150 to 170 feet per second, going from 24 inches down to 18 inches. That's about a 55 to 6% decrease in muzzle velocity. And that works out to a decrease of about 25 feet per second per inch of barrel loss on average. Now, it's also worth noting there was an increase in velocity standard deviation going from a longer to a shorter barrel. That means there is more variation in velocities from shot to shot. Now, along with the slower velocities, this is also exactly what I would expect. Now, standard deviation does play into accuracy. It's one of many things that affects accuracy. 
It's especially important as ranges increase, but it's also important to note that there are several variables at play here too, besides barrel length, both in terms of accuracy and velocity standard deviation. In that vein, it's worth noting the federal ammo had the lowest standard deviations out of everything here. There wasn't much change in standard deviation when going from the long to the short barrel with that ammo, and even the short barrel data set had the second lowest standard deviation of everything I tested. So what does all of this mean in the real world? Like you would expect, that slower muzzle velocity results in a more arcing trajectory, less retained kinetic energy, and a slower impact velocity downrange. So for each bullet type, we're looking at about one inch more bullet drop at 300 yards and about six inches more bullet drop at 500 yards with the short barreled rifle compared to the longer barrel. Now that's not nothing, but that's also somewhat easily accounted for with a laser rangefinder, a ballistic app or dope guard, and a scope with an adjustable turret, like the Leupold VX5 scope I have on the MG Microlite I used in this video. Next, you are looking at about an increase of 12 to 15% in muzzle energy. Same is also true for retained energy downrange for each bullet type going from the 18 inch long barrel to the 24 inch long barrel. Next, I also like to have a minimum impact velocity of about 2000 feet per second for optimum bullet performance while hunting. That is a guideline, not a hard and fast rule, but in general, faster impact velocities result in more rapid, and more dramatic bullet mushrooming for a given bullet type. The opposite is also true, and if the bullet is going too slow when it hits the animal, it won't mushroom much or at all, and you run the risk of it just penciling through the animal and not causing much damage. So as you can see here, going from an 18-inch long barrel up to a 24-inch long barrel means the bullet hits that velocity threshold about 80 to 100 yards farther downrange for each of these three loads. Now moving on, reduced muzzle velocity also means more wind deflection. Bullet ballistic coefficient does play a role in terms of retained velocity and kinetic energy, as well as trajectory, but it is especially important for wind deflection. Apples to apples, the slower load for each bullet type had a little more wind deflection, but even the slow ELDX load had either the same or less wind deflection than all of the other loads since it has the highest BC of the bunch. But yes, the faster ELDX load did the best here in terms of performance in the wind. There's not a gigantic difference in wind deflection between barrel lengths, especially at shorter range. You're looking at about a half inch difference at 300 yards and about one and a half to two inches difference at 500 yards. Wind is more difficult to account for than bullet drop, and I would rather have less deflection than more, but we're still not talking about a gigantic difference here. Maybe 8 to 10% difference between the long and the short barrel. Your mileage here may vary depending on the exact lot of ammo you're shooting, the exact rifle you're using, all of that stuff. But the results I just gave you will at least get you in the ballpark. Now, remember, there are no solutions. There are only trade-offs. To that point, heavy rifles like this Bergara Wilderness Terrain is not Fun to carry, but you're also wringing nearly all the performance possible out of the 6.5 Creedmoor with this longer barrel. The rifle also shoots great. It's not the specific topic of this video, but lighter rifles in general are more difficult to shoot accurately than heavier rifles. And that is why there are weight restrictions on rifles used in PRS and NRL Hunter matches. But on the flip side of the coin, light rifles like the Bergara MG Microlite are much lighter, much easier to carry. You do lose some muzzle velocity, right? 150 to 170 feet per second in this case. And so there's all the downsides that come with that. In some cases, that's a good trade-off. In other situations, it is not. But all in all, I was pleasantly surprised with how well the 6.5 Creedmoor performed out of this shorter barrel. This rifle, or one like it from another manufacturer or from Bergara, right? Bergara, for instance, makes a version of their Ridge rifle also has an 18 inch long barrel. It's heavier than the Microlite, but still lightweight. It's also much less expensive than the Microlite. In any case, a rifle like that is a good choice for someone who prioritizes a lightweight and compact rifle, and they'll be using it in a situation where the reduced performance at long range is less important. 
right? If you're never going to shoot past 350, maybe 400 yards anyway, then you're not losing a lot of performance by going down to an 18 inch long barrel. Now, a short barreled rifle like this is also a good choice to pair with a suppressor. Even with a banished backcountry attached, this rifle is still shorter and lighter than the wilderness terrain without a suppressor. Now, you can learn more about the rifle, scopes, ammunition, all that stuff that I used in this video at the link in the episode description. And if you enjoyed this video and you want more content along these lines, visit thebiggamehuntingblog.com slash ebook. Sign up there for a free ebook I have written on the best hunting calibers. I've also put a link to where you can get that ebook in the video description and in the pinned comment. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel right now and hit that like button. Just click on the thumbs up button and the red subscribe button below the video to make sure you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a great day and good hunting.